Welcome back to another community news here at 3D Jake. I am your host, Coffee Black, speaking to you from my office in sunny Grads. And wow, it's been an interesting little while in 3D printing. Quite a bit has happened, so let's start from the beginning, shall we? So we recently got a few new printers in the shop. Uh, so to begin with, we had the Anchor Make M5. This was an interesting chap. It started off as a Kickstarter uh, just under a year ago, I believe, uh, advertising as a 300 millimeter per second bed slinger with rubber roller bearings. Interesting. But now they have announced a firmware update, which actually brings up that speed to 500 millimeters per second, which is a bit insane. Another printer we're getting is the Creality K1 and it's Big Brother the K1 Max. Uh, and if you've seen the videos and the posts and the banners from Creality about this printer, uh, you might have noticed some similarities to another certain printer. But this is considerably cheaper uh, with very, very, very similar features. And we might have noticed it's actually in the corner there. I've just got it today. We're going to be doing some testing. I haven't made my mind up yet, but the printer boasts up to 600 millimeters per second. And I am very interested to see how it turns out. No decisions made yet, but stay tuned. Recently, we reviewed the newest addition to the Anycubic FDM family, that being the Cobra 2, which is also right behind me. It's been in my little workhorse for the last few weeks. Really, really nice. We're printing at between 200 and 250 millimeters per second and 2,500 millimeters per second squared acceleration. We have pushed it up to 3,000 with very little loss of quality, uh, but there isn't really a huge advantage in print time by doing that. I've been printing a lot of screw boxes that like push into an IKEA SCADIS pegboard uh, because my screw organization is a complete mess. Uh, but the Anycubic Cobra 2 has been super helpful for that. Really, really quick results. Next up, we have the Anycubic Photon Mono 2, and this is a 4K plus resin printer. Beyond that, there are the usual accoutrements like the Light Turbo Matrix UV unit, uh, a laser engraved platform for bed adhesion, and a new version of Photon Workshop. And this looks like a really, really nice choice if you're just getting into resin printing. Continuing with resin printers, Creality are coming out with their Halot Mage range. This is a normal one and a pro version, uh, which are on the higher end of the budget scale. Uh, as you can see, I got mine. I haven't tested it, obviously. I haven't opened it. It only came today, but I'm excited to try it. It's going to be cool. A bit heavy. Uh. With this, we're looking at an 8K screen, LAN cloud and USB interfaces, which is nice to have all three options. Automatic resin pump. So you might've heard of the, uh, what was it? The Anycubic M3 back in the day. Now Creality have their own version of a resin pump and the Dynax motion system, which is, has closed loop motors that prevent vibrations and step loss at high speeds. Uh, but that means that this printer can go up to 170 millimeters per hour, which is nice considering most are like 80 thereabouts so yeah that sounds interesting on the filament side of things polymaker have released some new colors to their polyterra range this is uh, the muted purple so they have a few muted colors and if you're familiar with polyterra they have an amazing color range and they're kind of focusing on these pastel colors it's a really nice really nice range that they have and this printed on the cobra 2 at 200 millimeters per second and it came up beautifully the color is gorgeous but yeah, check out the muted range. It looks really nice. In very recent news, uh, Elegu have just announced the Neptune 4 and the Saturn 3 printers. The Neptune 4 and Neptune 4 Pro, which are both bed slingers, I must add, are aiming at 500 millimeters per second print speed with Clipper. So apparently not proprietary. This is using Clipper. And the Saturn 3 is boasting a 12K resolution, which is a bit insane. Lastly, you might have noticed a bit of a trend with the printers that I've discussed today. So the Cobra 2, high speed, low budget, um, the Anchor Make M5, high speed, I wouldn't say low budget, but accessible for sure. Uh, the K1, high speed, also accessible, but much, much cheaper than the other printer. Uh, the Neptune 4, high speed, very low budget. A while ago, we spoke with Adam Meadows of Vector 3D. There's a, a link below if you want to check out the interview we did with him. Uh, we spoke to him. I asked him, first of all, what predictions he would make for 3D printing in the near future. And he said that there would be uh, less of a need or a demand for lower end devices, sort of um, race to the bottom style printers and a shift in the market to higher end devices, 700 to 1000 euros, something like that. And he was totally right about that. So this was just, just a bit after the uh, X1C came out. And then we had the P1P, just like a stripped down version of the X1C. We now have the M5, the K1, 
Uh, but now we might be sort of repeating history with a new race to the bottom. Because the Neptune 4 will not be the only sub 300 euro, 500 millimeter per second printer on the market this year. We're going to see lots. Or we'll see more demand for higher end devices, higher end features, which keep the price up, but also spark competition between manufacturers to see who can be the best, basically. And Bamboo Lab actually released an article just a couple of weeks ago commenting on new high-speed printers, specifically the, the Mark IV and the Prusa XL. Uh, and the article is literally called Let the Arms Race Begin. Now, if it is an arms race, well, that's great. But if it's a budget race and all we see is a clone fest, then, well, that's not as exciting. So this is going to be an interesting year in 3D printing. I honestly don't know whether we're going to be delving back into a race to the bottom or will, will there be a boom in technology and manufacturers trying to scramble to create the next best thing. I don't know. But let's leave it at that for the minute and we'll see you again next time. Later, guys.